something we can all see right now is that chaos has seemed to suddenly taken over the world. Even if we read the news, we read any social network, try to see some news on the TV, we will see the same pattern everywhere. Everything seems to be in complete chaos, being it politics, economics, science, or even religions. Everywhere we can see chaos popping up and in infecting everything. Nothing seems to be following a straight line. But what if we find some kind of logic, some kind of order in that chaos? What if we can sort that chaos and put order right there where everybody seems to see the same thing, that nothing seems to have a logic? Well, putting order to chaos is something that every sacred book in the history of humanity has tried to teach us that it's a divine property. God is the one who creates order from chaos. Those same books who have been trying to teach us about this idea of finding, creating some order from what seems to be chaotic, those same books have been warning us, alerting us about these specific times. Prophecies have been written in rocks, in books, everywhere, trying to alert us about these specific times. Lots have been spoken about the 2012, the Mayans were the biggest ones about this, or the most known ones, but a lot of different cultures have been speaking about these specific times. The Incas, the Mayans, Egyptians, Hopis in North America. All those and even more cultures have been trying to warn us about something happening in the world starting in 2012. Well, most people have seemed to forgot about what happened there. But if we follow the news and see in every day that something has changed in the world, everything seems to be more chaotic and more problematic we can start to understand that if this chaos has been prophesied by those cult cultures, then it's not so chaotic anymore. It follows an order. Those same prophecies and those same cultures have teachings that alert us and warn us about what to do and what not to do in these times. What we have to make sure to create in our lives and what we have to avoid connecting to. Those same cultures have been trying to teach us about these specific times and this specific humanity for thousands of years. Those cultures have even hit rocks writing for thousands of years, waiting for us to read them and to understand what's happening now and what's the correct path for us to follow. Among the many initiatory cultures that Javier has spoken about, there's a specific one that also holds prophecies for our time. I'm talking about the Hopi. The Hopi are a people of America, an ancient people of America, that hold specific rocks, specifically again, the Hopi prophecy rock, which is specially intended for our time, for us to learn about the original teaching. What does this rock, what does this rock present? What does this map represent? The map represents two paths, two timelines. The first timeline is the timeline of the collective. It's, it's the path of the collective, or of the collective, of the four ruling paradigms. It's the path of science, religion, politics, and economy. This has been confirmed by the very person who found and discovered this rock. I am talking about Thomas Banyanka a member of the Hopi culture. That path ends very messily when something similar to a blue lightning, as it's called, strikes the earth and breaks down that path. Now, there's a second path, a different path, another path, the other path, the path of the individual, which holds the original teaching that was given to humanity by God, by the divinity, by the divine. This teaching is represented by a circle which for many millennia remained hidden. You can see that in the very rock itself where this circle is a little bit to, to down, to the downside. It's hidden 
in that path. For many millennia, that teaching remained a cult. And now it's time for each one of us to connect with it. Because that path, that teaching, is the only one that teaches us the different steps to connect with that blue lightning energy in order for us to create our own reality. This is shown in the map, in the Pro Hopi Prophecy Rock, as the person, the human being who manages to connect with divinity, the mage, the magician, the wizard, growing what he wants to grow, creating what he wants to grow, creating the crops that for that specific culture was the representative of sacred, of the reality that they wanted to create. Either you take the path of the collective and it ends messily, or you connect with the divine teaching that allows you to create your own reality. That teaching has been methodized by José Luis Parise. And this change that the method, the teaching of the method of the 11 steps of magic, that allows you to create your own reality, that change, that paradigm shift, is something that only you can do individually. Each one of us individually. What are the keys? What are the different steps of this method is what we are going to discuss from now on. All of those cultures Frances has just mentioned talk about the same teaching, but they do it in a very hidden way. They are not transparent, it's not easy to see which are those points they have in common. But thanks to José Luis Parise, who has studied for many, many years, who had read for many, many years about those cultures, we know that they come from the same ancient teaching. They have a root in common. José Luis Parise used a Western way to understand them. As, as I said before, they are not transparent, so you have to study them and he studied them using a Western tool, so he also translated these points, these teachings had in common, into a more Western way of understanding and also using them. He used psychoanalysis. He studied through psychoanalysis, he listened through psychoanalysis, Buddha, Christ, Muhammad, he analyzed the words like as if they were their patients. Well, that's what he do with Christ, with Buddha, with the Bible, with Muhammad, with the um, Hopis, with the Mayas, and he found out there are points in common. He translated them, as I said before, those steps, those, those points into a method, and he called that method the 11 steps of magic. Why? Because those 11 steps allow you to create your own reality, as the Incas did with, the, with their sacred cities, as uh, Jesus Christ did with his life and his teaching, as Buddha did it. They created their, their own reality. That's why 2,000 years later, 3,000 years later, we still not only remember them, but also follow their words. So they created lives full of divinity. They created realities that they were unique. Well, these 11 steps José Luis Parise created teach you and guide you to have your own reality, your own life full of magic. And that's what we are going to be teaching in these uh, meetings. We are going to leave the web page we've created our social networks. This is what we are going to not only translate, but also teach in these uh, videos. Thank you.